you guys, it's Tanya, and today I want to share with you another one of the Tattered Angels uh, Naturally Aged Paint System. This one's in the Architecture family, and it's called Red Brick. And as always with these systems, you are going to get four bottles of medium from the Tattered Angels family, as well as a full instruction sheet that is in full color on how to do this technique. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull my mediums out. We're going to have a glaze today that is fuzzy coconut, a uh, glimmer mist that is nougat, 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 if I could talk today it'd be good, and a glimmer mist that is boardwalk, and a chalkboard which is cherry cola, and the chalkboards have a little more of a flat color to them. Now. As always with these kits, if these are sampler sizes, they're one ounce bottles. So if you find that you really like this technique and you want to use it on a bigger project, these colors are available in larger bottle sizes. So just check with your retailers on that. And um, you know, as always, if you're having trouble finding it, contact uh, Flamingo Scraps and ask Suzanne to special order it for you. If she can, she will. Um, but I'm going to clean my board up some. I want to try this technique today two different ways because uh, anytime I ask the question, what if, I really, you know, just want to get in here and play. And we're playing with these. So um, the instruction sheets say that. Um, the supplies that you'll need, there's a list of supplies that are recommended, but it also gives you a way to do the technique different if you don't have the supplies. So one of the things that they suggest is the stencil that is from Crafters Workshop. I happen to have it. I know Flamingo Scraps can order these, so if you don't have it, get with Suzanne. You could actually use any brick stencil that you happen to have. I think there's several out there from different companies. So the first step that we want to do, and uh, like I said, I want to try this on two different ways. One is I have a tag here that is uh, just plain manila tag, and then I also have one that I have already used the stencil on and covered it with uh, fiber, uh, blended fiber gel from Liquitex. So um, I want to see what what the difference is between the two. So we're going to do them side by side. Now, you're going to start out with the nougat, and you want to shake these mediums up really well because they do settle to the bottom, and you want all of that, uh, you know, medium to be active. So I'm going to spray. This is our base where our mortar would be. You can really see that gel there. And you want to just blot this up a little bit. Overspray here is quite intense. Then you want to take your boardwalk and then just in a few spots. You don't want a lot. You're, this is going to be the dirty part of your mortar. So you're just going to kind of blot it in a couple of spots. And if it puddles like this, you just want to have a baby wipe handy and just kind of blot it up. That gives it more of a concrete look. Isn't that cool? How Because it's splattered on there. It just mixes with that and just gives you a really nice concrete look. Now on this tag, because it already has that um, fiber gel on it, I'm just going to blot that up and then spray this on here. And again, where it's puddled, I'm just going to pick it up because you don't you want it to be dirty, but you don't want it to be, you know, saturated. You can really see the brick there with that. So let's clean our surface up. Now the next step, I'm going to put this tag to the side for just a minute, or actually both of them. I need to really quick dry this. The next step, because this tag already has my uh, brick defined on it, I'm going to put it to the side and I'm going to use this tag with the stencil. And because my tag has kind of curled a little bit, I'm just going to bend it and try to encourage it to go back in the other direction. You could iron it out if you wanted to, but, you know, I'm just going to go with it. 
Now, you could probably tape it down, too, to keep it more flat. But you really want the stencil to lay flat on the surface because that's what's going to... And make sure your brick is straight on your tag because that's what's going to give it... Um, you know, you just want to make sure it's good and straight flat. Now, my stencil is old. Um, I've had it for a while, so it's kind of warped over time with me accidentally heating it with the heat tool and washing it and things like that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it down to my mat. And before you begin really spraying these, you do want to make sure your work surface is um, protected and you have... Um, a, a, you know like some kind of, of mat. I had someone ask me about this mat. This is the Ranger um, nonstick craft mat that I have on my surface and you want to make sure you have some sort of nonstick craft mat. I know there are other brands out there but I just prefer this one over the rest of them. Now this step is not necessary taping the stencil down but because my stencil is warped I, I, I kind of feel like I need to. So the next color we're going to try is going to be the cherry cola and this one you want to shake it up really good and get the glimmer off the bottom and it's a highly concentrated red color so you want to you want to be um, frugal with this particular step and it and the directions say to hold it five to six inches up away from your project and to do it in a hairspray motion like if you were spraying hairspray so you want to go left to right with the brick pattern if you go right if you go up and down with the brick pattern you may end up spraying it under the stencil which is not the look we're after so I'm gonna go swipe it side to side. I'm upside down so it's going to be hard to go from this angle but I'm going to try. And see how I'm moving my wrist as I'm spraying across the stencil. I'm going to blot that up and I'm blotting. I'm not I'm not like going from side to side here because again I don't want to encourage that to go underneath that stencil. I'm just going to blot this surface up. I'm just using a baby wipe. I'm going to remove this from the scene. <laughs> and now I have this nice brick pattern on here. I'm going to pull this away. Clean up my surface. And now it's time for the next step. Now, I do want this color also on this, on this brick. But I think what I want to do, because I'm never going to line this back up, the way I had it. It may be a challenge. Yeah. I'm probably not going to get it lined up right. Ever. So I'm going to do this step a little bit differently on here. And I think I'm going to paint it on with a paintbrush. And I'm just going to find like a little detail brush. I had one on my desk, but I dropped it. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to paint it onto these bricks to start out with my base color. Try really hard not to get it in the valleys of, you know, of the paper. Now this also is an option if you don't have the stencil you can always take your paintbrush and just do irregular lines with this and paint it on rather than spraying it on which is another reason why I wanted to show you this step. And We're using a small surface so it shouldn't take long to cover it and as you can see that silicone is really soaking up that pink so it's giving it a good intense color and you're maintaining that texture on this tag. It looks a little more perfect on the other tag. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward this until I have all of these bricks covered. Okay, now that you have both your projects, you have the uh, bricks covered, the next step is we're going to come back with the coconut shell, the fuzzy coconut shell, or fu excuse me, fuzzy coconut, 
and we are going to repeat the same process again and we're going to paint over these bricks now the trick to this is this is a glaze so you want this to be thick and puddle especially on the tag that we do not uh, use the molding paste on or the fiber paste on we really want to be very generous with it and we want it to puddle because the puddling of this glaze when we heat set it it is going to give it some texture and you only want to do a few of these bricks at a time and then you want to heat set it and see how that's puddling on there that's what we want we want we not necessarily complete coverage but you do want some good puddles and because this tag has been wet it wants to curl you want to go ahead and and when you get a few of these done you want to go ahead and heat set it and that before you move on to the next so I'm going to finish up this row right here maybe add a little more right there and now I'm going to heat set it You want to get really close to the medium too because you want it to crack, you want it to bubble because that's what's going to give you your texture that you're after. See how that's bubbling there? That's what you want. You can hear it popping too. The popping is good. That is the actual glaze medium in there heating up and blistering. And when it blisters, that's what causes the texture that you want on the bricks. So I'm going to repeat this process and I'm going to go ahead and, vid and speed up this video. Repeating this process till this entire tag is covered. And I'm also going to go ahead and cover this tag with the same medium. So I'll be right back. Okay, so for the next step, we want to come back with the uh, chalkboard cola, cherry cola, and you're going to spray it on your mat, and you're going to paint that over the areas of the brick. And this is just going to help to take it back from that dark brown color of the glaze back to a red color. And it's going to fill in those areas that the glaze is not touching. Just be real careful not to get into the valley if you can afford, avoid it. Put that one to the side and you can already see it's really intense I'm loving it loving it clean this up a little bit so it doesn't get on my tag some of this is already dried on the mat so I'm gonna spray another little good bit right there and I'm once again do it on this tag Okay, so there's that one. We're going to clean up our mess again. And we're going to dry both these tags one more time. Okay, so for this next step, the bricks just look a little bit too perfect. So for the next step, we're going to come back with our nougat. And we are going to spray it one more time over the bricks. And that's just going to help to give them a little bit of texture and kind of tone them down a little bit. And then we're going to come back in with our boardwalk and just spray just a hint of it here and there. Not a lot, but that's going to help to add that concrete value back to our mortar. 
and I'm just gonna take um, a baby wipe and just kind of blot I want to leave some of it there because it does help to add back to the texture just pull it to the side letting it puddle in there a little bit and it does kind of help to define the high points of that um, glaze on this tag that we um, you know bubbled up and it helps to give a little more definition to it so now we're gonna dry it and our tags are finished and you can see let's let's get them dry so you can compare them side by side okay so here's our two tags and I really am liking how they've turned out um, as you can see this one has obviously a little more texture because it's the one that had the um, blended fiber paste and then this one but you can achieve that look of texture from just the mediums themselves and again if you want like I have some bricks here that have very little texture to them if you want more just go back and add some more of the glaze which is the fuzzy coconut and repeat the steps until you get the look that you're after now I want to take my two tags to another level so I've pulled out some brushed corduroy here this is the Ranger distress ink and I just have a little applicator tool here and I, I chose this color because it has a nice gold undertone and I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna kind of rub it into that the over the brick and look at how I'm gonna leave half of it undone so you can see the difference here but to me this just adds a little bit more age to this tag and gives it a little more of a definition and again I'm gonna just take my uh, baby wipe here and wipe away some of this remember distress is reactive with water I mean I know you hear that said over and over again but it does help to the water helps to blend and look at the difference there between just adding that one extra step of some distress ink into the crevices the difference between you go from a more grayish um, you know grout to one that's a little more aged and tarnished so let's see how that works on here as well Put a little more on my applicator tool and again I'm going to just roll right over it and again look at the difference you see there with um, adding the brushed corduroy versus no brushed corduroy. So again, thank you guys for watching. I hope you really are enjoying these uh, these Tattered Angels techniques. Uh, and I can't wait to see what you guys are doing with these. Uh, they These are just, they're fun. They're absolutely fun to play with. So if you like watching these videos, if you like these technique videos, please leave me comments and let me know so that I know to continue. But I do have a few other sets up here. I think the bamboo is going to be next. Uh, that's going to be a really fun one. So uh, thanks again for watching and sticking with me through this long process. Um, if you want more details, you can also visit my blog at psychomomscrapbooks.blogspot.com and I'll put a link to it down below. And I'll put a link to the other paint systems that I've done videos for um, the playlist down below. So thanks for watching.